I used to think that I needed other people in order to do fun things. Traveling, celebrating occasions, eating at a restaurant or going to the movies. But after taking my first solo trip to the movies, I discovered the beauty of doing things just for me. Dating yourself is one of the most rewarding things and it actually really surprised me how much I enjoyed it. It seems like it would be lonely, but it actually is something that can kind of cure loneliness. You realize that you can have fun and be happy without needing to rely on other people and it's not that having to rely on other people is a bad thing. Loving connections are amazing and they're an amazing part of your life but learning to be okay with being alone and learning to enjoy your life without having to rely on other people is an amazing skill to have and you don't have to be single to date yourself. It is such an amazing thing to do regardless of your relationship status to spend quality time with yourself, celebrate yourself, do things just for you that you love and you enjoy. Learning not just to cope with being alone but actually enjoying your time when you're alone is so rewarding. So when I had airline tickets that needed to be reused after a cancelled trip, I planned a solo yoga retreat in Bali. The idea of going on this retreat by myself had me so inspired, but it wasn't going to be for another 11 months. I didn't want to wait that long. And when I really thought about it, there was nothing actually stopping me from doing most of the things that I was going to be doing on the retreat. I could meditate and do yoga, go for walks in nature or bike rides, go to the beach, make tropical juices, read, relax, all from the comfort of my home or a 15 minute drive away. Nothing was actually stopping me from doing doing these things, I didn't have to fly anywhere in order to have a retreat. So it was decided I was going to plan my very own at home retreat. I created a beautiful itinerary and a menu and a shopping list and a preparation checklist. I had so much fun putting it all together. However, when I was making it, it was still winter where I lived. And so the retreat that I wanted to do, which was bike rides and beach and picnics, had to wait at least three months. That was too long. I wanted to go on a retreat right now. I was feeling so inspired at the time. So that led me to planning a welcoming spring retreat. I would start off with a deep spring clean of my house to feel super refreshed for the new season. Going for a walk and picking wildflowers, making a strawberry pie to celebrate the coming of spring. Needless to say, planning mini retreats and weekend celebrations had become a new obsession. I'm going to plan an art and craft retreat, a book themed retreat, a weekend for celebrating the Halloween spookiness and of course the Christmas spirit in December. And then there's my birthday and the summer solstice and basically any occasion I could think of or no occasion at all. And the best part about these retreats is I don't have to worry about fitting in with other people's schedules or try to tailor the itineraries to what other people might like. These celebrations and retreats are a gift for myself and that doesn't mean I won't be celebrating Halloween and Christmas with my loved ones but I'm gonna pick a day in October and a day in December to do my very own celebration. Being intentional about creating these magical moments and celebrating things like the start of spring which could easily pass without acknowledgement is how I'm choosing to celebrate life itself. I hope this has inspired you to choose a weekend in the near future where you can take your own mini retreat or to go all out celebrating something just because it brings you joy. Let me know what themed retreat you would choose first in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and I'll see you guys next time.